Good morning. It is Friday, which is my favorite, and today the video is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a pretty long video, and the reason for that is I'm going to do a how-to video, form, pour, and finish concrete steps. And I'm going to try to make it as comprehensive as I can without making it, you know, several hours long. I really want to get it to the point where if you are actually a do-it-yourselfer, you could attempt this just by watching this video and try to pull it off. I notice all the time do-it-yourself videos and they skip large portions of stuff that you really need to know. So I'm going to try to get all the details in there that I can. I'm hoping this will be helpful not only to do-it-yourselfers, but also to finishers that just haven't had the opportunity to work on steps yet. Normally on a crew, your best finishers will set up the steps and they'll finish the steps. And sometimes the guys down a little lower, they can finish, you know, flat work just fine, driveways and patios and walks and all that. But they just never get an opportunity to hop on the steps. I think this video will be helpful to them as well. So I'm going to get to the coffee shop and I'll see you guys over there. How much garbage do we make? Nobody's in the coffee shop today. Thank you very Thanks. much. See you next time. Have yep. a great day. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Mr. Bobby's here for some reason. We'll see what he's doing over here. Mr. Bobby! Oh, I just grabbed the donuts. I just money. Alright, I got some stuff to do here. I'm going to be taking off in a minute. Stuff done. Yep. All right, I'm back here at Rivcrete Ready Mix, and you guys will remember this place. This is the place where I did the Ready Mix plant tour uh, just a couple few weeks ago, and they were kind enough to donate some concrete uh, just for the purpose of this demonstration. So I'm gonna go step by step how to set up, pour, and finish concrete steps. Steps are something that can be a little bit confusing to a new concrete guy or a homeowner. Uh, I'm gonna try to keep it as simple as possible. All right, so what I did is I drew a simulated door on these blocks. There's your handle right there. So down here, this is gonna be your threshold. So the first thing that you need to do is determine the total fall or the elevation difference between the threshold and where you need to get to at the lowest elevation. So we're gonna go ahead and measure this distance and then we're gonna divide it and figure out how many steps we need first of all, and then how much of a rise each step is going to have. So let's go ahead and measure that. So we have 20 inches of total fall that we need to make up the difference. So we're gonna have three risers. Each riser can only land somewhere between five and eight inches. Five inches minimum, eight inches absolute maximum. That's the code around here. I expect that that's probably the code all around the country. All right, so now in this example, we know we're gonna need three rises to get down to where we need to be. But you need to remember now, one of these rises is actually going to be the kick plate of the door. So we only need two concrete steps to make up three risers. In this instance, we had 20 inches, so we're gonna call that six and five eighths. So we're gonna go ahead and mark that all the way down six and five eighths. So we're gonna put two more markings down, and then we're gonna go ahead and draw that out on this concrete. All right, now we're gonna draw one more mark here at six and five eighths. sure that's exactly level all right so what we're going to do now is we're going to determine how wide we want these steps if this is the door here we always want to go a little bit beyond the door so when you're coming out the door there's not a chance that you're going to miss the first step so uh, you can really make this as wide as you want but in this instance i'm going to go about three inches uh, past the corner and then i'll draw a vertical line and our, our forms will start at that vertical line as they come out this way measure three inches and now we'll plumb that up and then we'll get our marks all the way down we'll do the same thing on this side and then we're going to be ready to start putting our forms up so that gives you a nice visual these are going to be your you know this is your kick plate this will be the beginning of the first step coming out and this will actually be the beginning of the second step coming out. So, that, so now I'm going to grab some wood and then I'll show you how we actually form these up. 
All right, so we have a two by eight, but a two by eight is about seven and a quarter inches. And that's too much. We need six and five eighths for our forms. So we're gonna go ahead and measure this out and we're gonna rip that down to exactly six and five eighths. So we'll mark this at six and five eighths on one end and the other. And then we'll go ahead and chalk a line. All right, so now our board is cut nice and straight at six and five eighths. The next thing that you have to do is determine how long you want your treads. A comfortable tread, in my opinion, is somewhere between 14 and 16 inches. We'll measure our 14 inches. We'll put a mark. Always use a framing square. So these are gonna be the sideboards for your very first step. And remember, they're not gonna go here because that's gonna be your kick plate. Your first step is actually gonna start one down right here. And now what we need to do is we need to get a form that's gonna contain the concrete in the front of the step. And this is a really common mistake that people make is they'll measure the distance from here to here and then they'll cut it to that exact distance. The problem is when you bring that across, you need to make up the inch and a half difference of this form. All right, so our total distance here of our steps is 38 inches. So we're gonna add an inch and a half on each side for a total of three inches. So we're gonna cut the face board at 41 inches long. All right, there's our board, 41 inches long. So now I'll show you how we put these boards together. So we're gonna go ahead and screw this to this on the inside. And then after this is screwed together, we'll go ahead and actually put it in place. So when you put steps together, a lot of guys like to use nails, duplex nails. I prefer to use screws. I use these duplex screws. They have a nice hex head on them and uh, they don't get filled with concrete uh, like some other screws, the number two square drive or the Phillips drive. And I prefer to use these. They're easy to get your impact back on after there's concrete on them and take them out. So when you screw these together, just make sure that the height of these boards matches and that you're right on the end because you cut this board exactly. So we'll go ahead and make sure that's right on. All right, so here it is, and this will get installed just like this, right to our lines that we made. It'll be nice and square, and that'll contain the concrete on the inside. I'm gonna go ahead and use steel stakes. These are three foot long stakes you can just as easily if you don't have these type of stakes you can use wooden stakes all right so normally at this point you would put stakes on the side as well unfortunately here i have concrete so i can't put stakes in the ground so what i'm going to do is i'll put wood blocking and i'll actually screw that to the concrete and that'll hold the sides up to the elevation and it'll also stop the concrete form from blowing out from the pressure of the concrete Alright, that's one, and we'll secure this with two. These are called tap cons, by the way. If you're ever drilling and having to attach wood to concrete, tap cons are really easy to use. They're very strong, good for situations like this. That's what most guys use. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is set this board to the proper elevation and then level it this way, and we'll give it a little pitch away so the water doesn't sit on the step. All right, so I just put a toenail here just to hold this board. It's at the exact elevation that we need. It's held firm against our blocking, so we know that's not gonna move when the concrete gets in there. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing to the other side, and then we're gonna adjust the elevation of the front of our step. So now we're gonna put a square on the inside of the steps here and make sure that they're square, because if you screw it too much this way, or too much this way, your steps can actually land out of square. They gotta go this way just a little bit. So we'll make that adjustment. <laughs> no, no, it's just for an example. Because steps are pretty confusing to a lot of guys, especially homeowners or do-it-yourselfers. And even 
guys that work in concrete because what happens is the best finishers always set up the steps and they always finish the steps. Okay. So the guys that are less experienced and maybe they're good at finishing flat work like driveways, but a lot of guys don't know how to set up and finish steps. Okay. Believe it or not, guys that have been around concrete for quite a while, it confuses them. So I think it might be helpful. Yeah, absolutely. I'll watch it because I messed up some steps this summer. <laughs> the, the finish didn't come up. So these steps we're gonna check for level this way. And then we're also gonna want a little bit of fall in this direction we want the water that lands on these steps to shed off the front i am looking for about an eighth of a bubble and i'm going to show you what that looks like up close so concrete guys we talk about a quarter of a bubble and an eighth of a bubble quite a bit so what we're talking about is there you have level as the bubble moves you have about an eighth of a bubble there and then you have about a quarter of a bubble there and then a half a bubble. That right there, what you see is a little bit too much. I'm gonna adjust it just a little bit. And then I'm gonna go ahead and screw it up to the elevation. Hold it a little bit high. Screw it in, double check your square again. We're perfect. And then what we'll do is we'll tap the front of this down and we'll watch that bubble. And that's about perfect. It's an eighth of a bubble that way. So now we'll check across the front. It looks like this side has to go down just a little bit, but we're gonna leave it right there and we're gonna screw it in. And then we'll tap it down to level. All right, we're perfect there. And then we'll check our other side and make sure we have approximately the same fall. I don't know if you can see that, but that's perfect, eighth of a bubble. So this step here is good to go. We'll put a little bit more bracing on it before we pour but it is in place, it's in position, and it is ready for concrete. So now we need to cut our sideboards for the second step. So we need to come out 28 inches because we need to go all the way to the wall and make up that first 14 inches. And then a second tread out here will make it 28 inches. So we'll cut 28 inch sideboards. So I'm gonna put these sideboards on first because it's kind of a tight fit there. And if I put it all together and screw it all together, I'm gonna to have a hard time getting it in there. So we'll put some pins in here to hold it. And then we'll go ahead and cut a board for the front. All right, so I just noticed the loader guy is starting to disassemble the wall, which I'm on the back side of. And I just really hope he's not taking all these blocks right now because that would be a problem. This could have been a big mistake. Hopefully not. <laughs> Hopefully not. Come on. I didn't actually ask. I told him I was going to be here. I didn't ask exactly where I could be. Hopefully this spot's okay. <laughs> oh boy. If I see my door starting to disappear, we're going to have a problem. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, let's put a screw in here to hold this tight. And we'll put a screw on the top one as well. So pretty much all we have left now is to put this face board on and then we're going to fill in a little bit on the bottom with some two by fours i'll show you why in just a second so the second board i'll cut the exact same length as the top board which was 41 inches all right so we'll put this board in here i'll put some pins in here and we're done be ready for concrete. So we'll do a final check now here. Make sure that there's still a little bit of drop on the second step. All right, that's perfect. That's got about an eighth of a bubble. The fronts are exactly level. There we go. Everything looks really good. Always double check everything before you put the concrete in. 
All right, so these steps are 100% ready to go. I'm gonna go talk to the dispatcher, see if we can get some concrete over here. Shortly, I'm gonna clean up the area in the meanwhile, and then I'll show you the tools that you're absolutely gonna need to finish the steps. Then I'm gonna show you a couple extra tools that would be nice for you to have if you want your steps even looking a little bit nicer. All right, so the tools that you absolutely have to have when you're gonna pour a set of steps like this, obviously you're gonna need a flat shovel to shovel the concrete and work the concrete within the forms. You're gonna need the tools that you use to set up the steps. So you're gonna need a hammer and you're gonna need a cordless drill or a cordless impact like this to remove the screws, tap the pins, pull all the forms off. So you're gonna need that. To finish the concrete, uh, there's a few tools that you absolutely have to have. You have a mag float. This is a 16 inch Marshall Town. This you're gonna go ahead and smooth the concrete and actually finish the concrete, the faces and all, uh, with this tool here. So that's a must. You're gonna need an edger. You're gonna run this edger on all the edges. I'll show you that, but you're gonna have to have that. And you're gonna need some kind of a brush. This is a concrete brush with some soft nylon bristles, and we're gonna drag that across all the surfaces. I'll show you how we do that, but you're gonna have to have that. Then there are a few tools that are nice to have. I always use them, but they're not completely necessary. Uh, so this is an outside nose tool. We just call them inside step tools and outside step tools. So this would be an outside step tool. I will show you how to use this on all the outside corners. And then we have an inside cove tool, which looks like this. And this you'll actually use where the vertical face meets the first tread. And I'll show you how we use this to make that look real pretty. And then uh, a couple other things that are nice to have is a margin trowel. You can get in all the little corners. You don't necessarily have to have it, but it's a nice tool to have. And then a paintbrush is really nice just to get in all those little detailed areas when you're brushing the concrete. Again, not a necessity, but just a nice thing to have to really put that final finish and the finishing touches on a set of steps like this. So concrete's on the way, and uh, I'm gonna grab a wheelbarrow, make sure that I'm ready so the guy's not waiting around for me, because this concrete's getting donated for no charge, which is really cool. Thank you, Rivcrete, appreciate that. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. What's going on? Hey, there he is. What's up, Victory? Hey. Oh, not much. Yeah. Good, how are you? Movie star. No, you're a movie star right now. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I was very impressed. It was very cool. Good. I was going to see if I could work out a little concrete with you. I need about two wheelbarrows. All right, concrete's here. It got here in like a few minutes, which is absolutely fantastic. So we'll go ahead and get these poured. All right, they put a bunch of chloride in it for me, but he said it is wet. So we'll see what we got. You can't complain about free, so. All right, well that ain't gonna work. That is, uh, <laughs> that's a little wet. That's a little wet. All right, so that concrete was just a little bit wet. We weren't able to use that. <laughs> They're gonna try to make us up some more here really quick. How's it going, man? What's up, man? Just need about two wheelbarrows. I'll give you one and a half. I got you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that was good. I was getting a little worried. It's getting late, and I didn't want it to get dark on us. We can work with that. That's beautiful. It's a little wet, but not too bad. All right, here we go. Yeah, it's a little wet, but we'll work with it. We'll work with it. That's all I need. Thank you, man. That had uh, some fibers in there, so it'll help you out. Yeah, that'll be all right. All right, so I just got the concrete in. 
I just slopped it in there. I just wanted to make sure we had enough. I was trying to get the truck out of here as quickly as possible because they did that for free and they want to reload that truck and get them on to the next paying customer. So obviously I have too much here. So the first thing we're going to do is just kind of get it somewhat in order and get it scraped down to the top of the height of the form and really work it in. You want to really work the concrete in to help eliminate any voids against the form. So I'm going to get some of this concrete out of here. All right, so we got the concrete in, and right now the concrete's just a little bit higher than the level of the form because we're gonna tap the forms with a hammer. And what that does is it actually vibrates the form and it fills any voids that might be against the form and that'll fill in with the concrete as you tap it. You wanna do a lot of light taps. You don't wanna hit it really hard. You just wanna tap it a bunch of times, very light, kind of like this, and go all the way around all the faces and the sides. And you can kind of see that concrete is dropping because it's starting to drop into all those voids. So after you have all your sides tapped and the faces tapped, the next step is to start smoothing it out with your mag float. So basically what you're going to want to do is get this concrete to the same level as the forms and to close up the surface back and forth. You can also hop the mag up and down a little bit. It'll kind of self level. So you want to make sure that the top of all these forms are clean. You want to get the faces, the outside faces all clean. You don't want a bunch of concrete hanging on your pins and your forms. You want to do a nice clean job and that'll be important later when we strip the form. So in the back here you want to make sure that the mag is at the elevation that you have established and if it's too high you just take your mag and you pull some down. You pull it off to the side and you can pull it right down onto the next step. So see how that mag matches the height of the form here that's what you're looking for so back and forth fill those little voids you can take the tip of your mag and push a little concrete against the wall if you need to to get it nice and filled in against that wall just like that now you got to remember when you're doing this this is just the initial stage of finishing concrete you don't need absolute perfection at this point. Really what you're trying to do is close it up and get the elevation established perfectly. It's a little high in this corner. We'll clean this all up real nice. Run it, tip your mag right on the form. And you know your elevation is perfect. And there you go. So let's go ahead and take care of this bottom step. Obviously this bottom step, it's pretty high. There's a lot of excess concrete. So you can actually take the side ear mag and kind of scrape it down a little bit. I'll take my shovel and take a shovel out of here because there's quite a bit extra in here. So we're gonna do the same thing on this bottom step. One of the things that you have to be careful for is that you're at the right elevation in the back here. So you're always gonna to wanna to find the bottom of your two by eight or whatever it is after you ripped it. Look for the bottom, take your finger, clean it off. Take the tip of your mag, clean it off, whatever you want. And you wanna make sure that when you float it, it is at the exact elevation of the bottom of that board. Otherwise, when you go to finish the concrete, it can be a real headache to get it back to where it should be. It's a little low in this corner. I don't know if you can see that, but it needs a little concrete in there or it's gonna be low. All right, there you go. That's what it should look like initially. Now at this point, we're gonna go ahead and wait. This concrete has to set up a little bit because the next step is to put an initial edge on the concrete. And right now we just poured it, so it's pretty wet. They end up making more of a mess if you start to edge it too early. So we're gonna go ahead and wash this mag off and then we're gonna give it some time, let it set up a little bit, and then I'll show you how we edge this. All right, I'm gonna show you a mistake that a lot of beginners make when they first start edging. One of the mistakes they make is they put too much pressure on the inside of the edger, on this side of the edger. And what happens then is they actually roll that edge down. Hopefully you can see how that edge is rolled down. And you don't want that. You want to make sure that this area is going to remain flat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and fix that up with my mag and get that flattened back out. If you roll the edge, this edge will actually be lower than the form and you definitely don't want that, especially on a set of steps. So keep that edger nice and flat. 
if your edger is flat, you should be able to see the line from the other side of your edger just like that. All right, I'm going to show you another little trick too. Hopefully you can see this little void on the corner where there's no concrete. And running the edger back and forth doesn't always just fill that void. So what we end up doing, and what you can do, is you can take the edger and scrape down a little bit and get a little bit of that cream off the surface. See that cream that's on the edger now? And then you go ahead and put it right in the edge where that void was. And that'll fill it in just perfect just like that. See how that filled that in? We call that stealing the cream. And then I also try to scrape the top of the forms nice and clean before you run that edger. All right, that looks really good for an initial edge. And then after you edge it, you know, we scrape cream from here and then you can see we left a line with the edger. Then you take your mag once again and you go ahead and you float that out and get that surface all closed up nice again. So that's pretty much perfect. Now I'm gonna go ahead and edge up the second step. And then we'll come back with the mag. Always double check that your height is right on in the back feel for that bottom of the board that can cost you time right there if you float a little bit too high or a little bit too low when it comes time to finish these steps it becomes more of a hassle all right so now at this point the concrete is starting to set up a little bit it's definitely not hard enough to pull the boards off but we can take some of these pins out so when you're working with steps you really want to keep up with them and what I mean by that is you keep doing things to the steps that you know you'll have to be later, but you can get them done now. So right now we can take some of the screws out, we can remove some of these pins. So when it comes time to finish these steps, we have a minimal amount of work to do to actually remove the forms. We can get right to the finishing. So I'll pull these screws out and pull these pins out. And I recommend using a vice grips to twist the pins out and pull them out instead of pounding them back and forth and disturbing the steps at all. So just give them a little twist and pull them straight out. And we'll fill those voids from the pins. Pack it in there good. All right, so we're gonna leave those two end pins in for just a little while. Concrete is definitely still too wet. If you push down on it and the concrete's still moving around quite a bit, you know that if you pull this board off, that concrete's gonna sag down. And that's what you don't want to have happen. So we're gonna give it some time and just keep an eye on it. Hey, are you busy, man? A little bit. Because uh, those steps are getting away from me. I need, I need help, yeah. Are you? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm like, dude, that's like two <laughs> you, steps. You should be done by now. I would if it would set off. It's, set, it's just sitting there. Is it? Yeah. All right, so I can feel that these steps are just about ready to finish. They may be just a little soft, but I'm gonna run out of daylight, so I need to get started on these. The first step is to finish the top surface. We'll re-edge everything and give the top its final finish. So I'll go ahead and mag this out. And now I'm gonna really make sure that it's tight up against that wall. You don't wanna leave any voids at all. All right, and then you're gonna take your edger and you're gonna run your edger for the last time. Clean up that top edge one more time. Like so. Get this side. And then you're gonna mag off the top. Oop, something fell in the corner there. We'll clean that up. And then we'll mag off the top one last time. All right, so now we're ready to pull the face board. So I'll pull these four screws out and then we'll take this face board off. And as we do this, we're gonna go really slow and be gentle because we wanna make sure that this concrete's gonna stand up on its own and it's not gonna start to sag.
And then what I do is I'll take the claw of the hammer and I actually stick it right in the end of the board, just like that, and very slowly kind of wiggle it and pull it up at the same time. And as you're pulling it up, you want to watch this top edge. You want to make sure that it doesn't start to sag. Like I said earlier, the concrete's a little bit wet right now, so I have to be extremely careful. So I pull this up and I see that top edge did not move at all, so I can pull this board completely off. Now the concrete is standing up on its own, but the surface, as you can see, it's rough. So we need to finish that. So the first thing that I'll typically do is I'll rub the bottom tread and I'll, I'll get this all flattened out. Earlier when I said it's very important to make sure that you take your float and find the bottom of that board, now you can see why that's important. See, now it's really easy because I kept it flat just to rub it back and forth and it's perfect. That's all you need to do. You close it all up and you float tight right to the step. And then I'll leave that alone. So then I'll take an edger and I'll go up this vertical surface here. So you get your edger in there and you get that vertical surface. You can steal cream like I showed you earlier and get that just perfect. And there you go. Fix that up just a little bit again. And then we'll do the same thing on this side. We'll take that edger. We'll run it up and down. You got to be really careful here. This concrete is wet. It's starting to sag just a little bit right there. It's a little early, but like I said, I'm running out of daylight. So I'm just going to have to do my best to not let this sag on me. So then the next step is to smooth the riser out. The face here is pretty rough, but we did a pretty good job of tapping it. There's not any big voids in it, uh, but we need to clean that up and make it look good. So you're going to put your mag against the surface and you're actually going to rub side to side. You don't really want to go up and down because you're going to cause this top edge to sag down. You want to be really careful around this top edge at this point, especially if it's a little wet like it is right now. But we're going to go ahead and we'll start at the bottom and you rub back and forth with your mag. Rub the bottom first, stay away from that top edge, especially when it's wet like that. I'm going to steal a little cream and close up these holes without disturbing that top edge much at all. Once the concrete sags down, it's really hard to get it back into place. And I'm running out of time on these, so I just need to keep going with it. Again, rub the face, start at the bottom, come towards the top. I'm going to steal a little cream and put it at the top. So after you rub them side to side, your last stroke can be vertical and you pull that up to the top edge. You don't leave any lines in the face at all. They should be perfectly smooth. So then you run this right on that top edge and see how that really cleans up that top edge and it leaves it just perfect. This is some nice concrete too, really nice concrete. So you can see what a nice job that does on that top edge. And then from that point, you would just take your mag one more time, clean it up right to that mark that you just left from the tool itself. And that's ready for a broom. There's one little hole right there, clean that up. And you could broom that. We're gonna go ahead and use the inside tool, the cove tool for this area here. And you rub that back and forth along that bottom edge. You can steal cream actually with the cove itself. See that? A little bit of cream to fill in that bit of a void. Back and forth until it's absolutely perfect. Same thing on this side. Now you see that filled in this edge just a little bit right here. So we'll take our edger and we'll clean that up again. We're actually gonna run the outside tool on this edge as well later. But just to get it looking nice for now. And then you can see the little line that the inside cove tool left. You'll go ahead and you'll take your mag 
and you'll smooth that out. The first face is completely done. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove the second face here and we'll do the same thing. Rub this top out. Make sure it's nice and flat. All right, so we're gonna tap this face just a little bit. We'll tap it sideways till we hear or see it release. Then we'll take the claw, stab it into the end and very carefully wiggle it up. And then we'll pull that off. All right, that looks pretty good, so we'll go ahead and rub this out. So we'll scrape this off the wall, keep that clean. You wanna make sure where you rub it here against the wall that you don't leave any voids, that it's just perfect. There's no difference between what it should look like on the top and the vertical surfaces. They should all be perfect. How your steps turn out, it's really a good gauge and it really separates the very good finishers from the so-so finishers. A very good finisher will have steps that look almost perfect, almost flawless. You can always find some flaw in concrete work, but they should be very minimal, especially if you're a top-notch finisher. Uh, you should have very few flaws that could be picked out. So now I'm gonna take the nose tool and I'm gonna finish all these edges once again and get these looking absolutely perfect. All your corners should be very crisp and looking great. When the customer comes out, they should immediately be able to tell that you actually know what you're doing. All right, so I have two brushes here. I have a paintbrush and then a regular concrete brush. The paintbrush is good for all these corners to get them started. All the real little stuff that you're not gonna be able to get a good broom on with the big broom. You can round over your edges a little bit. All the very tiny imperfections you can actually get out with the paintbrush as long as you're real close to begin with. And then you'll take your big brush and drag it across. So, all right, in all fairness, this brush is terrible. They're gonna be a little bit more rough than I generally would broom steps, but it's all I have right now, and I'll do the best I can with it. And then you take your big broom and you go ahead and drag it across. Yeah, it's, it's a little rough. Not bad. This broom is not good. But they'll still look nice. Now I'll take the paintbrush and I'll get it right in this cove. You gotta be careful, you don't wanna wreck that cove. You wanna keep that shape. And especially with this brush, which is not good, it's a little stiff, it's actually warped. If I put that right in the cove, it would mess up the shape a little bit. But it worked out. They look really nice. All the edges and corners are looking good. They all have a little bit of pitch coming away. They are perfectly level this way. All the corners are crisp and they look great. 
All right, we are all done with these steps. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I almost forgot to tell you the most important part. Anytime you put your final broom stroke on a set of steps, patio, sidewalk, driveway, it doesn't matter what it is, you have to declare easy money. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one.